So last time we were reading Chaitanya Charit Amrita Matya Lila 8, chapter 8, uh, and we ended in text number 205. So we will continue with text 206. And still, this is the conversation between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Ramananda Rai. The past times of Sri Radha and Krishna are self effulgent. They are happiness personified. They are unlimited and all powerful. Even so, the spiritual humors of such pastimes are never complete without the gopis, the Lord's personal friends. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is never complete without his spiritual potencies. Therefore, unless one takes shelter of the gopis, one cannot enter into the company of Radha and Krishna. Who can be interested in their spiritual pastimes without taking their shelter? So in this verse it's very clear, it's actually a quotation from Govinda Lilamrita 10.17. So here is said that the pastimes between Radha and Krishna are self-effulgent. So no need to put anything there. They are shining out of itself. They are happiness personified, unlimited and all-powerful. But even so, the spiritual humors of such pastimes are never complete without the gopis, the Lord's personal friends is said here. So we can understand there are different uh, forms of gopis, different moods under the gopis, and Prabhupada is actually using the word gopis like we often used it as sakis, so we have to think a little bit different maybe. But actually it's correct, of course. It's not that one is correct and the other not. Both is correct. So Prabhupada is saying gopis generally. And he's saying that a sakhi actually is more specific, because Sakis actually want to serve only Radharani and Krishna for their happiness. I just say this because when we read this, then there is no misunderstanding. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is never complete without his spiritual potencies. So we know 
the spiritual potencies, one of this is Ladini Shakti. And all the gopis actually are coming out from this Shakti. Because Radharani is the head of them. From her, all the love, all the Mahabhav is coming. But different varieties are coming to all the different kind of gopis. So also the laughter, the fun. Actually, it's coming, it's, it's uh, going more to completeness when the gopis are there. So then it will be more variety, more jokes, more laughter, and so on. So one cannot enter into the company of Radha and Krishna without taking shelter of these gopis. So, and we know that in this sense, gopis, gopi is used, the word, it also means a manjari. So without taking shelter by the lotus feet of a manjari, we cannot come to Radha Dasyam, to the seva. Of Radharani. It's not possible. So we have to take shelter of the gopis. Otherwise, we cannot come into the company of Radha and Krishna. Who can be interested in their spiritual pastimes without taking their shelter? Good question. Text 207. So if somebody is inspired to share something or um, <clears throat> correct me or something like that, please do it anytime. Otherwise, I will just go on reading. Text 207. Sakira Svabhava Eka Akatya Katana Krishna Sahanicha Lilaya Nahi Sakirmana. Here we can again see that Sakira, Prabhupada is actually uh, translating of the gopis. Just to remind. There is an inexplicable fact about the natural inclinations of the gopis. Now comes the way to Manjari Bhav, actually. The gopis never want to enjoy themselves with Krishna personally. Again, the gopis never want to enjoy themselves with Krishna personally. So why we will hear now, text 208. The happiness of the gopis increases. Ten million times when they serve to engage Sri Sri Radha and Krishna in their transcendental pastimes. So when they serve that Sri Radha and Krishna come together and they have a good time then they have 10 million times more happiness than if they would try to enjoy themselves with Krishna. Text 209 Radhara Swarupa Krishna Prema Kalpalata Sakigana hoy tara palava pushpa pata. 
by nature, Srimati Radharani is just like a creeper of love of Godhead. And the gopis are the twigs, flowers and leaves of that creeper. Again, by nature, Srimati Radharani is just like a creeper of love of Godhead. So we can understand a creeper is actually going around the tree, growing again more and more. The tree is growing, the creeper is growing more. It's actually like an embrace. The creeper is embracing the tree. But actually, I remember just a funny thing. It is said in Vilap Kusumanjali, it is described. I don't know the verse actually, but I know it's described there. The funny thing is that usually the tree is holding the creeper because the, tr the tree is strong and the creeper is holded by the tree. But actually in Radharani's case, it's vice versa, because the tree is Krishna, the Tamala tree, and the creeper actually keeps the tree, it holds the tree. Because she is a creeper of love of Godhead, and she actually has the most, the most powerful, the most sweetest, the most elegant, and so on, love for Krishna. And that's why, because she is so unlimitedly qualified in her love, and in her love blaze, so qualified to satisfy Krishna, that's why she actually is the creeper who holds the tree. She holds Krishna alive. And the gopis are the twigs, the flowers, and the leaves, and of course also the manjaris of that creeper. They are part of this creeper. Text 210. Krishna Lilamrita Yadi Latake Sinjai Nicha Sukahaite Palavadhyara Koti Sukahai When the nectar of Krishna's pastimes is sprinkled on that creeper, the happiness derived by the twigs, the flowers and leaves and the little flowers of the mandaris who are not going to flowers now. The happiness of these parts of the Gripa is 10 million times greater than that derived by the creeper itself. Purport by Srila Prabhupada in his Amrita Pravahabhasya, Srila Bhakti Vinotako states, Srimati Radharani is the creeper of love of Godhead. 
And the gopis are exactly like twigs, flowers and leaves. When water is sprinkled on the creeper, the twigs, flowers and leaves indirectly receive all the benefits of the creeper itself. However, water sprinkled directly on the twigs, leaves and flowers is not as effective as water sprinkled on the creeper's root. The gopis are not as pleased when they directly mix with Krishna as when they serve to unite Srimati Radharani with Krishna. Their transcendental pleasure lies in uniting them. Text 211 All the gopis, it's actually again a text from Govinda Lilamrita 1016. All the gopis, the personal friends of Srimati Radharani, are equal to her. Krishna is pleasing to the inhabitants of Brajabhumi, just as the moon is pleasing the lotus flower. His pleasure-giving potency is known as Aladini of which the active principle is Srimati Radharani. So we can understand that this is actually Tattva view. It's not a view of, uh, of, of Rasa, actually. <coughs> When the nectar of Krishna's pastimes is sprinkled on Srimati Radharani, all her friends, the gopis, immediately appreciate the pleasure a hundred times more than if they were sprinkled themselves. Actually, this is not at all wonderful. So this was the verse. So if here is said are equal to her, this is the Tattva side. It's not in, in, in from the Rasa side. We will never accept that that they are really equal. <laughs> But it's like we have the qualities of Krishna, so we are also equal to Krishna, the Jivas, but actually there's a difference in quantity. It is said in the scriptures. Like that, it's Tattva. If someone wants to correct something or has some inspiration, please share. Text 212. Yadyapi Sakira Krishna Sangame Nahimana Tatapi Radhika Yatne Karana 
Sangama. Although the gopis, Srimati Radharani's friends, do not desire to enjoy themselves directly with Krishna, Srimati Radharani makes a great endeavor to induce Krishna to enjoy himself with the gopis. We all remember what the Manjuris are doing when we hear Vilap Kusumanjali, when Krishna even just tries to give a garland directly, not giving it first Radharani, but directly from him, wants to give Ma. Then she is making like this, no, no. She will not accept. She will never accept anything. No Maha, no kisses, no nothing from Krishna directly. If Radharani takes it first, then that's something else. Text 213 Nana Chale Krishna Preri Sangama Karoi Atma Krishna Sangha Haite Koti Sukapoi Presenting various pleas for the gopis, Sri Radharani sometimes sends the gopis to Krishna just to enable them to associate with him directly. At such times, she enjoys a happiness ten million times greater than that enjoyed by direct association. So that's astonishing, isn't it? Even Radharani, when she is sending gopis there and they accept what a manjari would never do and a kinkri also not, but if so, then Radharani herself has 10 million times greater happiness. Isn't that amazing? That's her selflessness. That's her love. She just wants to have Krishna happy. She doesn't even care about how. Whatever makes him happy, that's good. There's no jealousy. There's a rasa jealousy, yes, but not a jealousy like we define it here in this world. She's not jealous when Krishna goes to some other gopi. Her jealousness is actually that she knows, oh, Krishna will not be happy. He will not be 100% satisfied when he enjoys with that gopi. Because this gopi is not, has not all aspects which are needed to satisfy Krishna fully. So she thinks, he will be not happy. And this is actually why she is upset. That's her jealousy. Something else like we know here. Text 214 
Anjonje vishuta breme kare rasa pushta, tan sabara brema deki krishna hoi tushta. The transcendental mellow is nourished by that mutual behavior in transcendental love of Godhead. When Krishna sees how the gopis have developed pure love for him, he becomes very satisfied. So in all these texts we may understand the nature of the love, the transcendent love actually. The transcendent love means I want to please Radharani and her beloved. Uh, yeah, her beloved. I want to do everything. I want to give. I don't want to have my enjoyment assured. I want that the other person is pleased as, as much as possible. That's my whole seva. That's the whole nature of all these gopis. So actually one may ask now, but how we can understand? Gurudev sometimes says that some of the gopis want to enjoy directly with Krishna. How we can understand that? It's similar to the jealousy of Radharani. Actually, if a gopi, which is a part of Radharani, has the understanding that she can actually really satisfy Krishna to 100%, then this is actually not true. She may satisfy him as much as she can. That's true. And that is actually what she will do. Because she is selfless. All the gopis are selfless. They don't want to enjoy like we in the material world. We want to enjoy our senses. But the enjoyment of the gopis is that Krishna enjoys actually. But even that you may see it as transcendental enjoyment. That's why we differ in Adik Sneha, in Sam Sneha and Visham Sneha. So the gopi who wants to give full enjoyment to Krishna herself is in Visham Sneha. The gopi who understand that she will never alone satisfy Krishna, but with the help of Radha, so she serves Radha and gives more enjoyment to Krishna, that's Samsneha. And Adiksneha is the person who understands that only Radharani can give full satisfaction to Krishna. And that's why I want to serve her because I want the Lord to be, to be fully satisfied. And this is only possible if I give my seva to Radharani. So if I said something wrong, please correct me. Or if you want to add something on that, please feel free anytime.
Text 215 Sahaja Gopira Brema Nahe Prakrita Kama Kama Grita Samyetara Kahi Kama Nama It is to be noted that the natural characteristic of the gopis is to love the Supreme Lord. Their lusty desire is not to be compared to material lust. Nonetheless, because their desire sometimes appears to resemble material lust, their transcendental love for Krishna is sometimes described as lust. So there's a short purport from Srila Prabhupada. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, that's actually the Gurudev of Srila Prabhupada, says that material lust should never be attributed to Krishna. So material lust should never be attributed to Krishna, who is full of transcendental knowledge. Material lust cannot be engaged in the service of the Lord, for it is applicable to, materialists, uh, to materialists and not to Krishna. Only prema or love of Godhead is applicable for a satisfaction of Krishna. Brahma is full service rendered unto the Lord. So here we hear Brahma is full service rendered unto the Lord. Prabhupada also makes this point love in action, in other words, but actually he is saying this so many times that Seva, service, is most important because this is Brema in action. The lusty affairs of the gopis actually constitute the topmost love of Godhead because the gopis never act for their own personal satisfaction. The gopis never act for their own personal satisfaction. They are simply pleased by engaging other gopis in the service of the Lord. The gopis derive more transcendental pleasure from indirectly engaging other gopis in the service of Krishna than from engaging in his service themselves. That is the difference between material lust and love of Godhead. Actually, I was just thinking about Gurudev because actually his seva under the umbrella is that he takes us and put us in the seva. This is actually what is described here. I remember gopis is used here as, as a word for all different sakis and gopis. So manjaris are included. So the manjari, 
who engages other manjaris in seva, they also have more satisfaction as when they make their seva directly. Actually, we know this uh, in, 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 we all have this ex experience, actually, Prabhupada also told this so many times. When we try to take other persons and show the way to the seva, and we, we can actually make that, it gives so much more satisfaction than to do yourself seva. What doesn't mean that you don't do yourself seva. This is anyway just the nature. <laughs> but it gives more pleasure to do that, to engage others in the seva. So lust applies to the material world and love of Godhead applies only to Krishna. Text 216. Bremai Vagopa Ramanam Kamait Akkamat Pratam Idhuta Vadhayo Pietam Vanchanti Bhagavat Priya. The dealings of the gopis with Krishna are on the platform of pure love. Pure love of Godhead. However, they are sometimes considered to be lusty. But because such dealings are completely spiritual, all the dear most devotees of the Lord, like Uddhava and others, also desire to participate in them. That's a quotation from Bhaktiras Amrita Sindhu 1 to 285. So again, we are reminded that the only point in the spiritual world is the exchange of the highest, purest love. And who does not want to be part of that. Only insane people. Or who does not want to have the highest and purest love and be part of that actually? Who, who doesn't want that? Text 217. Nichendriya Sukahetu Kamera Tatparya Krishna Sukha Tatparya Gopi Bhava Varya. Lusty desires are experienced when one is concerned with his own personal sense gratification. The mood of the gopis is not like that. Their only desire is to satisfy the senses of Krishna. So, again, it's very clearly said. What is the goal? Text 218. 
Nichendriya Sukha Vanchanahi Gopikara, Krishna Sukha Dite Kare Sangama Vihara. Among the gopis, there is not a pinch of desire for sense gratification. Among the gopis, there is not a pinch of desire for sense gratification. And actually, this is the point. No one, no person can be in Vrindavan if there is a pinch of desire for his sense gratification. This is also stated in Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi Anandadas Babaji is actually writing this. I think it was in uh, verse 68 or I, I don't remember. But there in, in uh, the purport actually, <clears throat> he's writing the same. I just remember. You cannot go into Vrindavan if you have this little very, very little pinch of desire for sense gratification. So we can understand whoever lives in Vrindavan, I mean, really lives in Vrindavan, not on, in, that they are completely free from all little spots of desire for sense gratification. Because their only desire, even the creepers, even the non-moving beings in Vrindavan, whoever is in Vrindavan, moving or non-moving, living entities, their only desire is to give pleasure to Krishna. And in this way, they mingle with him and enjoy him. So actually they enjoy his enjoyment. That's the point. Text 219 Yat te sujata charanam buru hang staneshu, bitta sanai priya tatimahi kakesheshu, tena tavim atasi tat vyatate na kim swit, kurpadi bhir pramati dhir bhavat ayushang naha. All the gopis said, Dear Krishna, we carefully hold your delicate lotus feet upon our heart breasts. When you walk in the forest, your soft lotus feet are pricked by small bits of stone. We fear that this is paining you. You are our life and soul. And our minds are very disturbed when your lotus feet are pained. This is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam 10.31.19. <clears throat> we remember also that Arati Manjari or Srila Prabhupada <clears throat> they have the same mood when Radharani is going on Abhisa. They also have this fear and uh, they are very disturbed in the mind when they think that actually Radharani's feet they may be somehow hurt. And 
if Swamini rushes out for Krishna, no one can hold her back. And she has a very, very strong way to go towards the meeting. It is said like a river who is flooding. Uh, how do you say? The, so the surface, or I don't know, around, the surrounding, it's flooding everything actually. You cannot hold her back, so her feet may be hurt. So the mandaris, they have fear that actually these feet may be hurt. That's rasa. Because we know that Radharani's feet, and that's the good thing, they are so soft, like cotton wool. And if you take a knife, sharp knife, and put cotton wool on it, then the cotton wool will go left and right, but it will be not cut it, actually, if you just put it on. Because it's so soft. So lucky we are that Radharani's feet are so soft, so they cannot be cut. And lucky we are that always a stream of nectar is coming out of these lotus feet of Swamini. In this way, they also cannot be burned if she is walking over hot stones. But also, the mantras know that, of course, out of their love, they may be in sorrow like that, similar to the gopis who are fearing about the feet of the Lord. Text 220. Se gopi bhav amrite yanra lopa hai veda dharma loka tvachi se krishna bhai. One who is attracted by that ecstatic love of the gopis does not care about the regulative principles of Vedic life or popular opinion. Rather, he completely surrenders unto Krishna and renders service unto him. That's a very ecstatic statement, actually. Yeah? One who is attracted by the ecstatic love of the gopis specifically, in our case, Manjari Bhav, does not care about the regulative principles of Vedic life or popular opinion. like Radharani, doesn't care for anything. There are snakes in the forest and she's going on Abhisa. She don't care for anything. She is just going straight to her meeting. She don't care. She don't care what the elders say. She don't care what actually the rituals would be. She don't care what time it is. She don't care that actually she is married. She don't care about anything. She's just rushing. Like that. It's a person who is attracted by this ecstatic love. 
And so he completely surrenders unto Krishna and renders service unto him. And we know we are so lucky that our Guru Manjari is giving us this knowledge, this knowledge in the heart, Divya Kyan, that actually this means to serve Radha. Because if you want to give enjoyment fully to Krishna, it's only through Radha. So whoever is touched by that ecstatic love, he will actually act like mad. Text 221. Raga nuga marge tanre bhache ne jana, ze chana pai brache vachendranandana. If one worships the Lord on the path of spontaneous love, that's why it's called spontaneous actually. You don't care about any other thing. That's spontaneous, isn't it? If you have some spontaneous wish, you don't care. You are following. It's spontaneous. It's right now in the heart and it just has to be fulfilled. That's spontaneous love. You have to go for it. It's not possible to resist. If one worships the Lord on the path of such spontaneous love and goes to Brindavan, he receives the shelter of Brachendra Nandana, the son of Nanda Maharaj. This is what Gurudev always say, if you sign. If you sign, you receive the shelter. You are going with love and you want to serve and now you get the shelter. We receive the shelter of Rajendra Nandana, the son of Nanda Maharaj. If Krishna runs after some person who is just pronouncing one syllable of Radha's name, ah, if he is running behind the person and is giving himself, what he will do if someone is serving in love to Radharani. I think we have to consider that. We are in a very, very, very lucky position if we just go on and try to serve Radharani. Not because we can do it, not because we are qualified, not of out of any of these reasons. Actually, just because Guru Manjari was giving us the understanding that this is the best to do. Try. Also, you are not qualified. We will receive the shelter of Rajendra Nandana and he will help us on our path to serve Radha. There's a purport on this verse 221 by Srila Prabhupada. In all, there are six, 64 items listed for the rendering of service unto Krishna. 
And these are the regulative principles enjoyed in the Shastras and given by the spiritual master. One has to serve Krishna according to these regulative principles. But, there is a but. If one develops spontaneous law for Krishna, as exhibited in the activities of those who live in Brajbhumi, one attains the platform of Raga Nuga Bhakti. One who has developed this spontaneous love is eligible for elevation to the platform enjoyed by the inhabitants of Brajabhumi. In Brajabhumi, there are no regulative principles set forth for Krishna's service. Rather, everything is carried out in spontaneous, natural love for Krishna. Isn't that amazing? That's from Prabhupada. He's telling here very clear, if someone is coming to the platform of spontaneous love, there are no regulative principles. Because in the spiritual world there are none. They don't exist there. How you can regulate love? How you can regulate spontaneous love? Show me. It's not possible. Try to regulate the gopis or <laughs> Radharani when she is going out for Abhisa. <laughs> Try to regulate her. Try it. No way. There is no question of following the principles of the Vedic system there. Such principles are followed within this material world and as long as one is on the material platform, he has to execute them. However, spontaneous love of Krishna is transcendental. It may seem that the regulative principles are being violated, but the devotee is on the transcendental platform. Such service is called gunatita or nirguna, for it is not contaminated by the three modes of material nature. Isn't that wonderful? I don't know why I was reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, but I never had this really, I, I, I never understood that or I never read it, I don't know. <laughs> it's so clear and it's so amazing. And actually, if you are going on this path and you may think, you may have this question in your mind, but maybe I'm not pure enough, you know. I have to follow more the regulative principles. Maybe I'm not pure enough. 
So how I can know? How I can know if I'm on the right way and I'm doing right actually isn't Swamini personal? Isn't Guru Manjari personal? Isn't Ananga Manjari? We know Nitai is also Ananga Manjari. Isn't she personal? Do they not talk with us and show us what's wrong and what's good? Don't they? They do. We have to have a little faith that they do and listen, feel, and we will understand. But if we are going again and again out of fear in the regulative principles, we will never listen and never feel, and then we will go on in regulative thoughts, and then feelings are dying. At least that's my experience. If somebody wants to share in this topic, please, please, you are welcome. Most welcome. My experience was after 25 years regulated life in ISKCON that I lost any taste. There was taste in the beginning, a lot. I cannot say that there was no taste. There was a lot of taste. I was very happy. But after 25 years, everything got so dry. And I didn't understand why. In that moment, I did, I did not understand why. Today I understand. Actually, in this moment, somebody should be there to show you how to change from a regulative devotion into spontaneous devotion, because there is also a bridge. But if nobody is around you who actually went through that path, how they can show you? They cannot, because they didn't have this experience, actually. I don't want to say that no one in ISKCON has this experience. I just can say that the persons who were around me, there was no one who could actually help me or tried to help me to find the way to spontaneous service, to loving service. So I was trying up. Fortunately, when I was dry, like a leaf crashed on the floor, you know, when you step on it, it makes <laughs> Fortunately, Gurudev stepped on that dry leaf. And the juice of his love, the love of Radharani, which is running through him, actually gave new life to this dry leaf. Slowly, but recovering. So still, I'm very slow in progress, but Gurudev is giving further and further and further. Like the juice which is coming out from Radharani's lotus feet. So this is needed. We need this love. If we don't get any drop of this love, 
our spontaneous love in the heart cannot get in fire. And if we don't have this rati, then we cannot serve in love. So fortunately, we have Rati Mandri. We have the books of Rati Mandri. And we have Guru Mandri and other Mandris around us who have Rati. And they are not misers. They share. They give us also some drops. In this way, we can grow. Thank you for that, all of you. Bracha lokera grona bhava lana ye baje bhava yukya deha pana krishna paya braje. In his liberated stage, the devotee is attracted by one of the five humors in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. As he continues to serve the Lord in that transcendental mood, he attains a spiritual body to serve Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan. I find it very interesting that actually it's written five humors. Isn't that amazing? Humors. So actually that shows that in the spiritual world everything is just fun. <laughs> they are just making fun of everything. They are not dry like us here in the material world. You know, if some music comes, you don't know if you should move or not. Maybe somebody will see you and, you know. Like, they have really fun there. They are joking. They are actually taking roles of love. And in these roles of love, they exchange love with humor, with life, with, with everything. Full, spontaneous. They are coming out of themselves. Like Radharani is losing herself in Mother Nakya Mahabhav. They are all coming out of themselves. They are giving everything. They are giving all, all in. They are having a great time. It's not like here. And they are playing in this Five kinds. We know these five kinds. And we know that we choose Manjari Bath. And they are actually having the most fun. Why? Because the most clever person in making jokes is our Swamini. <laughs> And if we are together with our Swamini, we will have the, the most fun, the best jokes. We will laugh about Krishna and with Krishna. And we will also laugh about everyone else in jokes and fun. And in love, in Brahma. In Mahabhav, these jokes are not going on one bill of a person. Their jokes are actually giving ecstasy to all persons. We also have to remember that. It's completely different than here.
So in one of these transcendental moods, this person, which is actually described here as liberated already, because if someone has spontaneous love, he's liberated. He's not anymore in this material world. Why? Because love is not from this world. Brema is not from this world. Brema is from the spiritual world and needs a body to be exchanged. A bhavadeya. It needs a transcendental body to be exchanged, right? So now you have to choose. You are free from material world. You, are, you have already spontaneous love. So choose. What will be your most fun? Where will you have the most fun, the ecstatic love? Choose. Manjari bath, please. Text 223. Dahate Tristanta Upanishad Shrutigan Ragamarge Bachi Paila Vrachendanandana. Those saintly persons who presented the Upanishads are vivid examples of that. By worshipping the Lord on the path of spontaneous love, they attained the lotus feet of Prachenda Nandana, the son of Nanda Maharaj. So there's a purport by Srila Prabhupada. In the Goloka Vrindavan planet, Krishna's servants are headed by Raktaka and Patraka. Krishna's friends are headed by Sridham, Subal and others. They are also elderly gopis and the cowherd men headed by Nanda Maharaj. Madhya Shoda and others. All, all of these personalities are eternally engaged in the loving service of the Lord in accordance with their specific attachment for Krishna. So they all made it. One who wants to return home to serve the Lord directly is attracted to Krishna as a servant, a friend, father or mother. By continuously serving Krishna during his, this life, in a particular ecstasy, you see here even is said in a particular in a particular ecstasy. They are in ecstasy. One gives up the material body and attains a suitable spiritual body to serve Krishna in terms of a particular attachment. Our, our attachment is Radharani's lotus feet. Jai Ho! Gurudev! Uh,
शिला प्रभु पर की जाए जय श्री राधे Someone wants to say more? Add something or give some feelings to it or It's just amazing all this and we are now since some weeks listening to our dear Gorvani Bhuyas Vani sharing about Chaitanya Charitamrita but actually come uh, we have to be together alone is uh, <laughs> impossible <laughs> <laughs> where is your better half Gorvani She's sitting here because the harmonium was between us actually. <laughs> so actually like now we were listening for uh, verse after verse and by the mercy of Guru Dev Chakshuana Dila the eyes are opening right for Rani Maria we actually understand Chaitanya Charitamrita as it is. I feel we have always had this bhagavad gita as it is and also our udav bhai is now sharing by guru dev's empowerment and grace and now we also understand those scriptures you know guru dev always said after reading vilakpa sumanjali if one reads chitani charitamrita it will be everything will be clear because it's really revealed and and now the verses we were reading you know that spontaneous seva like as dasis we don't have time to think they are no oh, no so many now i have to sit and chant and remember you no we have no time we have become really one in this bhava deya and this seva deya and we only serve and we only relish we only engage in laughing jokes this is becomes our nature and when we spend some time with our dear guru dev we get a glimpse you know of spontaneous love spontaneous seva we come down to him and he really says hey can you get this oh now you have to go tomorrow you have to go radha kun you have to take everyone there 
prepare the snacks, order the bus, gather everyone. Doravani, now you have to go collect everyone. And we're like, you know, we don't have time to think. Actually, I, I come down to Guru's basement and I think, okay, now I will sit and relax. And so and then immediately something else he organizes. No, this is training. This is the real training he's giving us, you know. And it's also not like, oh, no, Gurudev, now I cannot do this here because I'm, I'm busy, you know. I have to work. Like, that's my nature. I still put my mind in that. But, but if we really understand the meanings of Gurudev's words and his training program for us, we can see that it's really a preparation for their... In Chaitanya Chaita Rita, it's written, Sadhane Bhave Yaha Siddha Deha Bhave Daha. So whatever sadhana I do here, but Habibe with feelings, this is the component ingredient we receive from Guru Dev. We can do sadhana, but if we don't add feelings, if there is no spontaneous loving attraction to the sadhana, if we just try repetition, then the fruits we will not really be juicy and tasty, right? But if we add these feelings into our sadhana, in everything we do, everything is sadhana. Not only we sit in the morning and chant, but everything becomes with feeling. Then the, the fruits are very ripe and juicy for us. And this is what Chaitanya Charitamrita is really showing. I feel like so grateful when listening now that, you know, each and every verse and each of Prabhupada's understanding and explanation is totally congruent what we are hearing, reading, and practicing with the guidance of our Shiva Guru. You know, this is really uh, unbelievable. How Chaitanya Chaitanya is now unveiling, you know, actually all the things which we have been up for the last uh, years or weeks, months, whatever, we have been you know, hearing from Guru that and, and trying to practice. So, just a, a spontaneous sharing on, on that. There are many other things which are coming, but I just felt um, to, to share this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love your comments always because they are always very deep and also always very personal, actually. I love this. I love you anyway. I, lo so. I love you. I said it first. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to be connected again and again with Brindavan. And actually, that's also one part of your mercy. I see that you are always so busy to connect us, actually, that we can hear each other, see each other exchange such loving uh, rasa and we have this connection with Gurudev although we have this connection inside also with Guru Manjari but that's also one thing which is giving another taste we need sweet salty bitter Sour, we need all tastes actually. That's what Gurudev always says. Um, whenever we prepare food, it has to be sweet, salty, and sour. And that's the mixture, that's the this ingredients, this bhav has to be in there, no? So we need also in our spiritual practice. Sometimes it's sweet, sometimes it's sour, <laughs> sometimes it's salt <laughs> but it's it's part of it you know it it's just on our how we want to integrate right for one of those ingredients that's the point sometimes we can eat bitter sometimes we don't like it so much <laughs> but actually sometimes we need bitter because it's good for digestion we can digest the sweet and sour things more better with some bitter ingredients also but usually we try to avoid bitter <laughs> yeah <laughs> 
not but anyway there is this we are feeded we are feeded by uh, guru manjari and radharani so they will feed us with the with the best stuff we need right we don't have to care ourselves you know Bhagavan, it just reminds me of uh, what you said in the beginning when you were reading that um, some manjaris are worried about the tender feet of radhika when she goes on abhisar no but sometimes they have to be also a little strict with her. Now, why is that happening? Sometimes they have to push her for the Abhisar, for the meeting, because she's already so much overwhelmed by anxiety. You know, when you are very anxious, you know, and suddenly you get like this feeling of, you know, everything is numb and trembling at the same time, and you cannot move, you know, and um, then uh, you might, you know, somebody needs to take you and say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm with you. Like if you have to go to the finance amt, for instance, in the material world, <laughs> the tax office. <laughs> so it's just, uh, yeah, maybe not the best comparison, but you get, you get this feeling, no? When it's feeling that you get a letter from the tax office. Oh my God, <laughs> what happened now? So... Sometimes Radharani says it's also like in this feeling like she wants, you know, she really wants to meet him, but at the same time she's very young and shy. So she all these feelings come into her. She cannot move, you know, and then also sometimes they have to a little bit, you know, say, come, come, you have to go. If you don't go, then how will the Leela unfold? You know, how will we be able to serve in the Punja? You know, think of us also. You have to go, you know, and they take her, like, of course, very gently. But um, this, this, you know, even in, in, the, in, the, in the spiritual realm, you know, it's salty, sweet, bitter, so all is there. just wanted to kind of connect that with what you, what you were reading in the beginning. Rather. Thank you very much. Actually, nothing is missing. Whatever is here in the material world is also in the spiritual sky, right? So, and even more, of course, more and more and more. So nothing is missing, actually. And this is actually a very um, good feeling. We will not miss anything. We will get more. That's why we can just go. So, what's the time actually? Ah, oh, okay. So, maybe I continue this um, uh, this comments by Srila Prabhupada because we were in the mid of the purport. And it was a very interesting point. Because by continuously serving Krishna during this life, in a particular ecstasy, one gives up the material body and attains a suitable spiritual body to serve in terms of a particular attachment. So this is our future. That's the future of all of us, actually, if we go on. One may serve as a servant, friend, father or mother in the same way if one wants to serve Krishna in conjugal love, he can also attain a body under the guidance of the gopis. The most vivid example in this connection is those saintly personality known as Shrutis who presented the Upanishads. These Shrutis understand that without serving Krishna and following in the footsteps of the gopis and following in the footsteps of the gopis there is no possibility of entering the kingdom of God. 
Therefore, they engage in spontaneous loving service unto Krishna and follow in the footsteps of the gopis. That's a main point, isn't it? Gopina, please say more. <laughs> Radha Charan, help me. Give me some feelings. It's not things, but it's just I'm trying to understand actually my mind. Return to the beginning of what you start from what your thoughts when you started. Uh, you're explaining what why Mandari or some Gobi choose to serve Shimati Radical because they think they attracted to Krishna and they think who can serve to him. In better way, Shimatradika. What is why they fall in completely Shimatradika? From the other way, I heard, but they have feeling, they accepting this uh, Shimatradika's beloved because he is Shimatradika's beloved. Actually, uh, they not think about him in this way, but not attracted to him. But we accepted him because Shimatradika accepted him. I don't know it's it's my uh, under, uh, what, what I express is clear now. It's, I see this difference in this uh, understanding. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. I think your mic is muted, Goran. I don't know if I got the point because there was some break in in. Uh, I will try again. In I internet. will try again. Uh, I, I maybe Gopinath, your voice is more clear. I don't know. Maybe it's the mic he has. Brother Charan, maybe maybe the mic is not so good. I, I will try again. Uh, no, is my voice clear? Yeah, now I can hear it better. Okay. Um, I heard today from you oh, some gopi, they attracted to Krishna in such a way that they understand it, but who can serve him in better way? Srimati Radhika? What is why they taken shelter of Srimati Radhika? It is Manjari. But I heard and also some feeling of this. But um, Manjari, they're not taking care about Krishna, but they're taking care only because he is uh, choose by Srimati Radhika. If she will choose someone else, they also will choose. Like this. This means they not choose him bec because of their feelings to him, but they choose him because of feelings Srimati Radhika. This I can see is different. Sorry. No, no, that that's that's true. Actually, in this text, like I said in the beginning, uh, is spoken about the gopis. This also includes actually gopis who are in some snare, for example. So, of course, we know our mood, and you are completely right. And I really thank you to make this clear again. But actually, we have to differentiate what is actually written in the Chaitanya Travit Amrita by Srila Prabhupada. And uh, this is, and also by Krishna, uh, Krishna Kaviraj Goswami. And this uh, differs a little bit. But anyway, we, we understand our bath. And it's it's very good that you actually explain again and make this point very clear that actually we don't care. I don't care if Radharani is with Govinda or with Giriraj 
or Mohan or I don't care. I will serve her. Even though I have my own deities, my own goal, but actually it's Radha and not so much the friend of her. If I understood you right, actually, the point is even if Radharani would go with somebody else, we would serve her, right? Is that, was that your point? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's the point. Very beautiful. Sorry, yeah. I think it's a, a very beautiful uh, point uh, that Sharon is highlighting here. The exclusive loyalty the Manjus have to Swami. It's even so exclusive that Rasik Shaker sometimes tries to lure the Manjuri into a grove. We know this in Vilaktu Sumanjali. Sometimes he appears and says, Oh, my young girl. Come with me, I'll make your life a success. And then Tulsi says, No, because my body exclusively belongs to my Swami. This loyalty, this intimate loyalty, Manjuri said for Swami, they are like shadow. As you said, Gorwani, they will follow her anywhere. Doesn't matter. But they will never have a split of tendency of enjoyment. Their only enjoyment is to be loyal to her, to serve her 100, 140%. There's a restaurant here in Vrindavan which says 140% vegetarian. So <laughs> I'm using that now. Not 100, not 108, but 140%. Like, uh, it's incredible. Incredible, uh, also from a thoughtful point of view, no? It's possible that the jiva can, you know, give up his independence and become totally loyal, surrendered. But here again, I, I come back always to this, that it's because of parampara, because of, of guru parampara, because of guru pranali, we see our senior manjuris are 140% loyal. So that is also infused to us. So we have no other wish and desire and tendency. And once we enter the parampara, then. Yes, I pray to you all that this loyalty will be in my heart, stay always completely fixed, like made out of the heart, actually. <laughs> actually, it's the greatest task, isn't it? To be completely selfless, actually. To love completely selfless. It's not so easy. Huh? Like Gurudev says, that this is actually much more difficult path than just follow rules and regulations, like in Vaidhi. But like you said, Gopinath, good luck. We are in the family. And as long as we stay in the family, Everybody is living that, so we cannot go out, actually. <laughs> even, even Radha, we know in Vilakta Sumanjali, even Radha one time tests Kursi, you know? She tests her, she says, hey Kursi, I make you my girlfriend, come, I'll make you one of my chief sake. You know, you will get a nice position, you will become my friend. Yeah, you know, that verse, I don't know, but and then she says, no, 
I don't want your friendship. I want to be your maid servant. And this is the parampara we are following through Paragunata Pade Hoyvea Puti, no? Following in the footsteps of Rupa Raghunath means this exclusively. I only want this. I only want to be your maid servant. I'm not interested in any other affairs. You know, even Swami is offering. She's offering to become a Yudeshwari, a chief gopi. What a high position. But Tulsi says no. You know, and then Swamini asks, why? Why is that so? He said, because since this beautiful girl, Sri Rupa Manjuri, introduced me to you, I only want to be your maid servant. Again, if you come back to the blessing of this Puru Parampara, that there is no other goal, you know? There is only this goal to become a maid servant, a dancer. Wonderful. So in this way, everything becomes like nectar. Because if we are actually living in this nectar, this means we are diving in the nectar. So that means we are swimming in the nectar. Then everything becomes nectar. Wherever you look, there is nectar. And this is also described in Vilap Kusumanchali from Anandadas Babaji. He is saying in this moment, actually the spiritual sky is like nectar. Then the material world is also like nectar. Everything is nectar. So wherever we are and whatever we see, then it's just nectar. But this is only in the absorption, actually, in the complete absorption. And this actually is possible by these sharings. Every day we have a sharing now, isn't it? At least one, <laughs> even more. There are also Japanese and uh, Croatian and, and insider uh, sharings also. So, so many sharings are there and we can dive every day in this nectar, isn't it? And this is mercy. So we just have to actually take the mercy. It's there. So thank you all. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Other children want wish to share something. Um, Sneha coming to man. Sneha coming to man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, develop a relationship between uh, guru and disciples also have this. And what? How connected with what I heard just? But, um, to see the nectar everywhere means it's Sudarshana. Mm -hmm. The nice vision, or the vision which is always looking for nice. Yeah. How it's possible it's if someone, Sanchari, not possible. Because you're looking everywhere. But the man, man makes person completely, how to say, one-pointed. What was before was not possible. Then man coming, it become possible. Even Krishna, he is Sanchari, it's his nature. But due to man of Shimadradga, show love for him, is some kind of fire inside. Mm -hmm. This um, je jealous uh, power, which is looking how you, how to say, how you, how your motivation is you, not deviating, mm. is guarding from inside. Shmatriyarika mm. guarding Krishna from inside, not alone, deviate. In the same way, uh, Guru also is guarding from inside by man, mm. because he receiving this uh, power from Shmatriyarika. Mm. And disciples deviating, he can feel, wow, 
so much fire and in his vision become zhuk, and he can see nectar, which was before not possible. It's like small Wow. It is so powerful that actually what Dajan is saying, like our Gurudev is a very living example of that because every one of us has experienced this. If we walk through that gate into his basement and we have not even stepped in, he already knows our vibrations. And you think, how does he know today? I didn't see him, I didn't tell him anything, you know. How does he know if my mind today is gentle, if I'm today a bit more deeper, or if I'm completely out, if I have any worry? Immediately, he can sense it. So it means if he can sense it here, he can sense it all the time. He can sense it all the time, which stage, where we are, what we need. Sometimes we need the sweetness of him. Sometimes we need the salty, <laughs> sometimes we need the sour, yeah. <laughs> sometimes we can. but it's all, you know, to increase, it's all for increasing our mood, our bhav to, from sanctuary to gradually, gradually developing something towards Sai. And then once we are more in this Sai Bhav, the connection with Gurudev becomes even more closer and intimate. Then also it's like river and ocean, I often feel that both come flow into each other, you know. Like when Gurudev says, you know, oh, you are all helping me. It's of course Gurudev is, is so humble, so deeply humble, you know. But at the same time, there's also a truth in it. When the disciple reaches a level of, of bhav, of sadhana, which is to develop his spiritual identity, it's the greatest, the greatest gift he can give to the guru. And the guru, greatest joy and greatest joy is when the disciple moves in this direction. So, for the sake of our Gurudev, we should, uh, you know, take serious what he has given us and we really, really deeply appreciate because also to give back something to Gurudev is also an extraordinary gift we got in this forum for us. Just to add, add to Radha Charan's beautiful sharing. Yes, so wonderful, actually, what you said. And actually, we also have to develop the faith that we are also used by Radharani. We are also used in the Seva. We can also um, transport some aspects, maybe some new, some something which is edible so we also have to develop this faith because it's not a question of our material ego it's a question of we want to be in the seva we want to be in radhadasya and then we also may be used and then we also have to be aware. That's also a point which is actually very important that we get aware that it's happening. Maybe in the beginning, just here and there, but more and more it's happening. Otherwise, how we want to get in if it's happening already, but we are not aware we are not with our heart feeling it actually and thinking it to be material uh, 
I think that's also an aspect what you said, actually. That's maybe another side of it. So it's an exchange, an active exchange between all of us. And that's the truth. We also have to come out of Aishvarya Bhav also in the connection to Gurudev and to other devotees who may be very great. Yes. But actually, if we stay in Aishvarya, how we can feel where we are and what steps we are actually doing. So it's also a question of awareness. And if somebody loves me without any restriction, he will accept me like I am. That's actually the point of this love, right? And he will not try to change me so that he loves me. He loves me like I am. And this is also an aspect, actually, I can just talk from my side. I depressed in the, in, in the club I was before, actually. And this was also not good. So there are so many aspects. The point is we have to be natural. We have to see that we don't fall in fear. If we fall in fear, this is exactly the vice versa of love. Also, Jan Nandaji is, uh, is here with us. And I'm sorry, I, I am another Japanese person, so I could not start turning there. But after hearing your awareness, now I have a small realization. <clears throat> so, Guru Dev awareness is very, very big, wider. Because he, his love is great. So Gurudev used to told me, you are impersonal. What do you mean impersonal? It's small number, you know, like awareness is very small. I don't care others. That is impersonal. So therefore, if we see, <coughs> Impersonal realization there. They think they are same, they are, they are, they are salvation. They don't care answers. This is impersonal. And then Gorabani Pabu say, Aishwarya Baba. Aishwarya Baba is awareness is, is not big because always the fear and reverence them. So maybe I don't need to go go cross with 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 the Lord because he may angry or he may you know he may you know you know like something some fear there. So but the, if prema is developing, the awareness is increasing. So now, you know, by the, by the month of Gurudev, why Gurudev telling me you are in Pasna? Because my awareness is not big. So, this honestly speaking, then slowly, slowly I could understand this awareness is love, prema, is it's relationship. So our love increases, then our awareness of others means we could feel others. So like a general quality of Vaishnava is paradokaduki. Someone is suffering, it takes all, you know, it's feel by myself. 
because awareness is very big. Because Vaisha is very humble. But like me, so puffed up. Then I cannot aware others. I cannot feel others' feeling. Why? Manjari is highest. Because Manjari is lowest. Saki is much higher. Gop is much higher. Manjari is very low. Low means so much awareness. So therefore, Manjari could feel what Radha is feeling, what Krishna is feeling. So this awareness and love is very much connected. So why Manjari low, lowest? But why Manjari feel most? Well, why Manjari has highest love? This is very connected. So today I don't I don't know this tema, but uh, I just hearing you know just to uh, Charana Prabhu and Gopinath Bhaiya and Godavani Prabhu. I just uh, now I slowly slowly realizing this awareness and love and impersonal, personal, very intimate. So this is Raga Bhakti. So Raga Bhakti needs intimate relations. And Raga Bhakti needs awareness. In person, person can like me, it cannot enter really Raga Bhakti. So I have to give up this in person tendency. This my small realization. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very uh, important point, actually. And as we know, it is written in all the scriptures we were, we really appreciate, like uh, Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi or Vilap Kusumanjali, that. This intimate relationship with Gurudev is actually friendship between Manjaris. So actually we have to see it in that light or meditate in that light that actually it, it comes it comes uh, in truth actually it, it because it has to grow we have to meditate on that so we are the friend of guru manjari i am a manjari and i am the friend of guru manjari of course guru manjari i have to learn because i'm very young i don't know anything but actually we are friends so this is the situation actually we are in, and this is described in the scriptures. So if we meditate on this actually, then we, I think we, we, we will make progress and get much more personal. Because I know from myself also, I have this impersonal tendency because we, we are used to that in the Western countries, especially. And that's why Prabhupada was actually writing also in his books so many times about impersonalism. In the beginning, I was asking myself why he's pressing this point so much. I don't know impersonalism uh, sects here in Germany. I don't know why he's pressing this point so much. Later, I understood we don't need a sect. We are the biggest sect of impersonalism, actually. <laughs> we, we are already practicing it. So it's a very important point you made, Jainana Maharaj. Thank you very much. And thank you all for listening. So we have to, to leave and uh, have to go, but you can share more. But we have to go on the way. We have some appointment. 
So thank you very much. Thank you all, Vaishnavas and Gurudev and uh, Jai Shri Radhe.